Hey YouTube, T Holtz here. We're looking at my 20 gallon long planted tank. I want to talk a little bit today about uh, dirted tanks. There's a lot of videos on YouTube uh, of people that are showing you how to dirt a tank, so we're not going to go into that. But uh, maybe there's somebody out there who's thinking about dirt in a tank and then is not sure if they should try it or not. So I'm just going to talk a little about my experience uh, with dirted tanks. I have four of them that are dirted. Uh, we're looking at, like I said, my 20 gallon high. I just did a little trim on this water sprite, although you really can't tell. It's still very much overgrown, this tank, but the water sprite's not anymore. Um, it was blocking the light, so I did a trim on it. Dwarf Sag, look how tall the Dwarf Sag is. It's almost three quarters of the way up this tank. Dirty tank, I use no fertilizers whatsoever in this tank. It's been running about a year now. You can see I got a lot of snails on the glass there. I, I go Every now and then I go in with my siphon during a water change and take them out. Or even in between water changes if I see a lot of them. But uh, as I was saying, I don't use any fertilizers in this in these tanks, and I get lush, incredible, uh, beautiful plant growth. All that comes from uh, the plants being rooted in the dirt, and even the non-rooted plants. This Java fern is huge. Nubius here, doing very well. Another Nubius. And even the floating plants, Richia moss, goes like crazy in this tank. I don't have any algae. This tank really doesn't have any algae at all. Maybe every now and then I clean the glass, but it really isn't... It's, it's really not algae. It's, it's like a, I don't know what it is, but it's really not green algae or, or black, al black hair algae or anything. Very rarely do I have to do any kind of maintenance as far as glass cleaning on this tank. It's balanced because I got a lot of plant growth. It's heavily planted. So if you want to do a dirted tank, that's the first thing you have to do is heavily plant it. Because you need something to take up all the nutrients that are going to be in the water. And you have to have floating plants. I have duckweed in this tank and Richia moss for my floating plants. They use up uh, the excess nutrients that are in the water column from uh, leaching out from the dirt. So if you're thinking about, well, I'm going to do a planted tank, but maybe it's kind of expensive because I got to buy fertilizers, I got to buy the Excel, I got to buy the, uh, oh, the, uh, the uh, iron or, or whatever. You might add trace elements, whatever you might want to add to the tank. Well, when you do dirt, you don't need to do any fertilizers at all, so it, it really isn't uh, it, it really isn't uh, expensive to to maintain a dirty tank. The one drawback, maybe that I can see, is if you're somebody that likes to rescape your tanks every so often. That's really uh. uh it really makes a mess when you want to start pulling plants up. I mean, look how thick this uh, dwarf sage is here. And that's all from, it just spreads out in the dirt. So if, if, you're going to, if you're going to be pulling plants out, it is messy. I mean, I don't pull plants out very often. I just put them in and let them grow. So I don't, I don't really uh, get the mess that often. Every now and then I pull up a plant. But I really, it really, I really don't do it that often. But that's the one drawback. It, it is messy if you're going to go in there and yank plants out and and rescape your tank. I pretty much leave mine alone for that reason. But as far as plant growth is goes, I mean, the dirt grows plants like crazy. It really does. So if you're on the fence and you're thinking about doing a dirted tank, it is something to think about. I mean, I was worried about when I got into these planted tanks whether I was going to be able to keep plants alive or not. And, uh, boy, there's no problem keeping plants alive. That's for sure. If there's any problem at all, it's just doing too much trimming because they grow, they grow so fast. 
and I don't really have problem with with uh, the gravel getting uh, getting dirty. You can't obviously uh, siphon your your planter tank gravel, the dirted tank gravel, like you can a regular planter tank. You're not going to dig your siphon down into the substrate to clean it. But I don't uh, I don't really find that being a problem uh, as long as you have a good cleanup crew. These tanks have a lot of snails in them. I didn't put any of them in, but they, they came on the plants. Uh, there's a lot of snails in these tanks, and, and the snails go through the gravel. You don't see them. This tank has a lot of snails in it. This is my 10-gallon. There's a lot of snails in here, but you don't see any of them right now because they're all in the substrate, digging through, cleaning out the substrate. So you, you naturally, the, the, the uh, snails occur on the plants and they get in your tank and clean up clean up your substrate for you to some extent so you really don't have to go in with a siphon and clean it. You do have to trim plants every so often especially if you're getting stem plants. You see my rotala here is that they're bent over at the surface. So if you're getting stem plants you, you are going to be doing some trimming. I pretty much just let things go. I like it the natural way and I let the plants do whatever they're going to do. But I'm definitely uh, a proponent of the dirty tank. I do one uh, water change a week on these tanks, about a third, sometimes I do 50%. This is another tank that has very little algae in it. There is some green algae on this Anubius, on the leaves of the Anubius, because they're directly under the light. So there is some algae on there. But there's no black beard algae or any kind of hair algae. There's no algae on the glass. And uh, that's because, again, you have to have the right balance. You have to have the nutrients being sucked out of the water by not only the rooted plants, but you need some floating plants to do that as well. So if you're thinking about dirtying your tanks, I would say go for it. It's worked well for me. Like I said, the only drawback is if you're going to be pulling plants out and moving them around, you do uh, disturb the dirt. Now let's take a quick look while we're here at my discus. They were swimming around back and forth a little while ago. Not moving much right now, but they look very good. This has uh, been in the tank a little over two days. Uh, they started eating last night. Uh, they ate last night, ate again today. So far, they've only eaten bloodworms, so that's what I'm giving them. Eventually, I'll try other foods once they get used to my feeding schedule. But they are looking, uh, so far, they are looking very good. This tank will get a water change tomorrow. I have five parts per million of uh, nitrates in this tank, so it'll get a it'll get a water change tomorrow. As you can see, the plants doing very well in this tank. Also, I don't really have fast growing plants in here, so there is some algae on the leaves of the plants. I do get some algae on the glass in this tank. And that's because I don't have enough fast growing plants. I need to get some floating plants. Maybe some um, water lettuce or salvinia or, or um, frog bit would be good in a tank. A bigger tank like this. I am trying to float this water sprite up here. I'm trying to get that to take some of the nutrients out of the water. So I do have that floating up there. And I'm going to try to do discus in a dirty tank. As you can see, they're all looking good. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching.